I racked my brains to try to come up with uh, some sort of puzzle to get the pills away from Susan. And I couldn't think of one, at least not one to keep it logical. And eventually I just bit the bullet and had Susan just give him to you. Uh, so that was that. That was my little cop-out. There's a guy, uh, a friend of mine, his name is Dave Stedham, also known as Creed Malai on the Adventure Game Studio internet forum. And I had sent him, I had shown him this little bit of dialogue. And just he's a friend and I was curious to get his opinion of it. And he um, just spouted out that last line. The, Can you look at me? I know it's hard. And I just started laughing, and I said, hey, could I use that line? And he said, sure, man, I'd be honored. So uh, Abe was coming over the next day to record some dialogue, so I had him just record the line, and I stuck it in. So, Creed, that one's for you. Well, this puzzle here, <laughs> I, uh, again, I get another what was I thinking moment. Uh, you're poisoning a dog, basically, to get through here. Uh, and uh, this is this is silly. This is adventure gamey and kind of a little ridiculous. Uh this isn't something a normal, rational thinking person would do. One of my favorite game journalists, his name is Richard Cobbett, he wrote this wonderful article um, about adventure games and how uh, adventure game characters, uh, player characters, are complete sociopaths doing things that a rational person would never do. A and this is a case of Rosa being a sociopath. Like, she's poisoning of someone's pet to solve a puzzle. And I really regret <laughs> doing this because this is so not something she would really actually do. Um, uh, sorry. It's funny how five years later, no one has ever called me out on this really silly thing that I did. You might remember earlier in the game, uh, a big deal was made about uh, the dog and the leash. You had to wrap the leash around the, the pole. It was this big puzzle and, and everything. Uh, so a lot of attention was called onto the dog and the leash. And now, look, you're taking this dog to the dog park and there's no leash. Uh, this dog leash was such a pain in the neck to implement, as you probably heard me rant about it earlier, uh, that I decided that it, I just I just wasn't going to do it <laughs> at this point, uh, and I just prayed that people would would ignore it or forgive it or whatever. But uh, no one seemed to notice it, or if they did, they they weren't bothered enough by it to call me out on it. Uh, so this is my five year post launch confession. So uh, forgive me, please. If there was anything that would have delayed the release of this game, it would have been importing the voice clips. It took so long. I actually took a week off from debugging simply to import the voice clips and I still didn't get it done. I'm talking a full week, you know, five you know, to eight hours every day importing voice clips and still not getting it done. That, that's how many voice clips are in this game. Um, there are at least, you know, Rosangela alone has about 2,000. Joey has about 1,000. All the other incidental characters maybe have 100 or 200 apiece. And I just, I mean, it just took so long, and I would just be sitting there, all, it'd be like 3 in the morning, importing voice clips, hearing Sandy and Abe uh, and Shen and everyone in my frigging sleep. Uh, it, <laughs> it takes a long time. So that is a little bit of warning for you guys. If uh, you ever plan on pursuing this crazy thing that I'm doing, voice importing takes a long time. So be warned. There's a lot of adventure game cliches that are considered cardinal sins if you put them in your game. Uh, there's mazes, that's one. The uh, paper under a door to get a key puzzle, uh, that's considered a cardinal sin, even though I've done that myself in, in later games. And another one is the forced stealth section. Uh, that is considered a no-no. And a lot of people had trouble getting past this section because the, they couldn't get to that. They didn't click fast enough on that little alcove um, before the guard comes by. And um, I guess this is kind of a forced puzzle. It, 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 the problem with it is that, I mean, how forgiving is and understanding is this guard? If you, you could do this puzzle like 20 times and the guard would be like, oh... Uh, and he doesn't like kick you out or call the police or arrest you or detain you or anything. That's kind of adventure game logic for you, which is uh, kind of a no-no. Again, kind of uh, some bad design choices on my part. Again, my very first. This was my very first game five years ago, uh, so hopefully uh, I can be forgiven here. The deacon is a real person, believe it or not. The deacon actually existed. There is a record of the deacon existing, um, and I won't tell you where. 
um, I guess I can I can have a little contest. Whoever can tell me where the deacon is mentioned, um, where it's a matter of sort of historical record, uh, sort of, sort of, maybe, kinda. But um, when I read about him, I knew it was someone I wanted to write about. Um, yeah, so he really does exist. Uh, I won't tell you where. I will not tell you where. You have to figure that out for yourselves, guys. Sorry. The first one to email me with the correct answer will win. Uh, I guess you'll win bragging rights, because <laughs> presumably if I, I can't give you a free copy of the game, because if you're listening to this, you presumably would have already bought a copy of the game. So you'll get a special mention on my website if you happen to get the answer. In the original commentary for this game, I kind of was very deliberately enigmatic about uh, where um, I first heard about the Deacon. Uh, he's sort of loosely based on someone who I assume existed. Uh, if you've played future Blackwell games, you will have uh, met the characters of Joseph Mitchell and Joe Gould. And uh, Joseph Mitchell wrote, they're both real people, and Joseph Mitchell wrote an, uh, a biography about uh, Joe Gould. <clears throat> Not a biography about himself while interviewing, about interviewing Joe Gould. And um, one of the stories Joe Gould told Mitchell was about some crazy career drunk who called himself the Deacon, who was convinced that the devil was after him and going to drag him to hell. And uh, something about that character resonated with me, and I um, imagined this ghost of that same Deacon who was worried about being dragged to hell. And especially if you're a dead person, you're going to worry about that kind of thing. So I turned into this character here. Joey has evolved <laughs> over the years. Uh, he first was seen in a, in a freeware game of mine called Purity of the Surf. Um, it was a reality on the norm game, uh, and I kind of included Joey in there as a way to promote uh, my next freeware game called Bestowers of Eternity. And he originally was kind of the wacky sidekick. He had the, the suit and he had the hat. He just kind of cracked a lot of jokes and all that stuff. And I kind of, um, I was kind of intended for him to be a little serious. He just never came across as being serious. And when I wrote this game, I purposely um, made him uh, not so funny. He's not funny. Uh, even when he does make a joke, and he does say some pretty funny things, it's kind of a as a way to, to mask a little bit of bitterness. Like, a lot of the jokes are, are based on some kind of bitterness, or it's just a way to kind of mask inner feelings, that kind of thing. So that's sort of where the, the jokes come from. Uh, I'm not sure if that comes across or not, but that's sort of my intention. And Abe did it very well. Like sometimes he would, he would. Abe is a very funny guy. If you listen to the bloopers, Abe is a, a funny, funny, funny guy. And so a lot of the times I would have to hold him back. I said, you know, don't be so wacky. Don't be so wacky when you say that line. You know, say it a little, little sarcasm. A little, uh, think more Edmund Blackadder than Jim Carrey, <laughs> so or Rowan Atkinson than Jim Carrey, and uh, more deadpan, more, more, you know, sarcastic and, and biting. Uh, and that's sort of the, the idea there. And here, especially, Joey is not being funny. He's laying a smackdown on the poor Deacon there. And uh, he finally gets a chance to let loose. And this I kind of like this uh, idea here because I wanted to um, show that Joey has a freaking violent side. And you can't get more violent than grabbing someone by their shirt and punching them in the stomach multiple times. So uh, I think I made that pretty clear. For those of you who can't tell, that voice is actually me. I did the voice of that demon, and it was something I decided to do when I came up with the character. And this was so much fun to play, because I can actually walk you through the process right here. Uh, first, I would I would talk in a growly voice like this, and I'd I'd uh, then I would use audacity and lower the pitch by sixteen percent. And then when I was done with that. I would add an, add an echo, echo to, my to my voice. voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'd do it again. I hope I can use this character once more. In the design document for the game, for this scene, I had written, Rosa convinces the deacon that the demon is a metaphorical representation of his inner demons. Uh, yeah, it's easy to write. <laughs> Not as easy to um, expand upon. And uh, this was my <laughs> biggest trouble. I wanted to have that demon there, if only because I wanted the ending lacked something. It needed something climactic. And having a big friggin' ass demon there, you know, about to rip someone's soul apart, uh, you can't get more climactic than that. And uh, But I was having trouble figuring out how this was going to play. And I had written every single line of dialogue for the entire game, and, uh, or at least the majority of it, and I was stuck with this. I couldn't figure it out. And 
uh, finally, I just kind of out of frustration, I just said, well, you know, forget the deacon. I'm just going to write a, write some dialogue with the demon. And I just uh, started writing and blah, blah, blah. And I wrote the line, uh, he, the, he is still carrying his sins with him. It just kind of came out, and then it was like, ding, the light bulb appearing above my head. The whole puzzle just clicked right into place. Uh, after weeks and weeks of frustration, I, I finally figured it out. And uh, that's, could, that's some advice for you guys. If you're having trouble uh, getting your mind around a certain puzzle, if something doesn't work right, or if something just doesn't, yeah, you know, you can't quite get it to fit, uh, try working on a different aspect. Try switching gears. That definitely helped me get this puzzle down uh, well. Uh, helped me get it down pat, and I quite, I quite like the way it turned out. I gave some thought to editing or changing this ending when I was re-recording the lines, and in the end I decided to keep it. Uh, I felt very strongly about this ending when I first made it five years ago, and even when I was designing the game, I knew the game would end uh, like this. Uh, though I think it might have been a little too clever, or not clever exactly, but maybe too subtle and um, kind of oblique and mysterious for its own good. I think that was my one of my major weaknesses back then, is that I tried to be very clever, like with the deacon and, and all this stuff, like, you know, just stuff that, oh, they'll, they'll get it later, uh, which I think is a mistake. Um, but but anyway, I think this I like this ending because it's uh, you have, Joey kind of gives this reveal about the aunts and how uh, Rosa now quietly accepts that uh, accepts this new position in her life. Like this is going to be her life from now on, and that yeah at the end just kind of conveys all of that. Um, uh, since I was re-recording it anyway, I kind of redid that one word several times just to get it just the way I wanted it, and uh, I still like it. I still like this ending. A lot of people don't like it. They felt it ended too abruptly. They uh, thought there, it should have been punchier. There was more that could have been said. Eh, screw that. I'm keeping it like it is. So obviously it's been five years since I released this game, uh, and it's interesting just revisiting uh, this game five years later uh, because things are a lot different now. I mean, the company is bigger. We've got a lot more games under our belt. We've been published by uh, a major publisher once, and we are now publishing other people. It's now a real business, and, and it's, it's weird because I'm in that weird position sometimes where I'm spending most of my day doing business stuff than game development stuff. And when I think back think back to Blackwell Legacy, uh, my work was the game and nothing else. I didn't think about business stuff. I didn't think about marketing or PR or how I was going to sell the game. I was just making the game and that was it. Life was a lot simpler then. And that sounds weird and cliche and esoteric, but it is true. And it is kind of, it was very nice to revisit that part of my life. And it has been a, an amazing five years since this game came out. Uh, I certainly didn't expect to be doing this, still be doing this five years later. No one's more surprised than me. And I really owe it all to you guys, of course, who, uh, especially those of you who bought this game when it first came out five years ago. And have come back game after game after game. Uh, obviously, saw something really good in it, despite all the flaws that I've mentioned over the course of this commentary. Uh, it's it's nice to know that despite my inexperience, despite my shoot and blind in terms of design, that I did more right than wrong. And you guys like the games and keep coming back. And that means more to me than, than anything else. And that's really all I can say. I know this is very esoteric and strange, but all I can say is thank you. Uh, I think I said thank you in the original commentary. I'm saying it again. Thank you. Um, it's been an amazing five years. I hope to be back again in another five and another five after that. Uh, I will be doing this as long as I can. And that's really all I can say. Thanks again.